Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to look at a cylinder head that has a damaged exhaust valve train through excessive heat. We're gonna discuss what causes these types of failures and what you can do to avoid these types of problems in your own engine. Now this particular engine is turbocharged and being a turbocharged engine, there's gonna be some back pressure present in the exhaust port. Back pressure is gonna be keeping the heat from freely leaving the cylinder. So if you look at a engine that has open headers like a top fuel dragster, you can visibly see the heat, the fire leaving the engine. Turbocharged engines are quite a bit different. That heat and energy is driving the turbine, but there's also a back pressure present. The higher the back pressure present in the system, the more temperature that is trapped in the engine causes a slew of problems on the engine itself, but mainly when you get to the overheating of the exhaust components, you can get into the exhaust valve tuliping or changing shape. This particular engine also has anti-lag. So anti-lag is when you run the ignition timing fairly retarded and you're causing that explosion to happen in the exhaust port instead of in the cylinder itself and then you get into driving those temperatures further and further up until the exhaust valve finally just gave up on this particular engine. Now that we understand the causes of these types of failures, let's discuss what you can do to try to avoid them. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about anti-lag. Anti-lag is hard on engine parts. I know that it's fun, everybody wants you to do it, it makes for cool pictures and videos. Just be mindful that there's a cost involved. So not only do you run the risk of damaging the exhaust valve train because of the combustion event and where the valves are positioned when that happens, just from a straight heat aspect alone, anti-lag is hard on parts. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the exhaust valve selection itself. During the process of building your engine or building your cylinder head, you'll be tasked with the decision of whether or not you'll buy aftermarket valves. Now, even though this particular engine the aftermarket exhaust valve has now failed, it did stay in one piece. So if you have a factory valve and that valve breaks and the head of the valve falls into the cylinder, you're talking about a ruined cylinder head, a ruined piston, and probably a ruined cylinder where you're gonna be shopping for a new engine block. So yes, the valve is ruined, but it stayed in one piece. That's a huge benefit when dealing with an aftermarket premium quality stainless or ink canal part. As far as stainless or ink canal or some of the super alloys that some manufacturers advertise, they're just kind of steps in the right direction. So if you have an engine that you're not gonna run extremely hard, it's not gonna see a ton of back pressure, you're not gonna be using a lot of anti-lag, aftermarket stainless valve is generally gonna be good enough. If you're gonna be going into high back pressure, you're, you know that you're gonna be class racing this car, you're gonna be at the starting line, you're gonna be on the anti-lag, making a lot of boost to effectively get the car off the starting line, spend the extra money on a premium quality in canal valve. It's going to last longer and it's gonna avoid these types of failures in your own engine. Now, aside from buying a quality valve, there's a couple other things you can do to try to bolster yourself against these types of failures. The first would be making sure that the cylinder head valve job is done with a wide margin. If you're dealing with a high strung, naturally aspirated engine that every single horsepower matters, you may end up with a narrow margin valve job to pick up some airflow. Turbocharging is a different game. Running a wide margin is gonna allow the valve to keep its temperature regulated better. On a turbocharged engine, you'd like to run a wider margin on a valve like this. This area or margin is gonna be acting as a heat sink, helping the valve regulate its temperature better. As you move back into the area that actually contacts the valve seat, this is the area of the valve that's gonna be transferring heat from the head of the valve into the cylinder head to the surface area of the valve job. Once the valve job deteriorates and the valve is not making concentric contact with the valve seat, the valve temperatures will not be as regulated and the valve job is gonna go away faster and you're gonna end up with a burned valve or possibly a tulip valve like we have here where the valve is highly deformed and we're just lucky it stayed in one piece. Another step you can take that's simple and easy is adding a little bit of idle time to the engine after you've made a run. So if you've gone this 1,320 foot blast with a lot of boost and a lot of heat, push the clutch in, get it to the return road, let it idle for a minute. Let those components normalize in temperature. If you have the engine 
where everything is very hot and you turn the engine off, these small stem valves will change shape and you will ruin the valve job just by shutting the engine off as everything is very hot and tempered from the run. So giving the engine some time to normalize is something that is an easy step you can take, add it to your run procedure and your stuff will last longer. So I have the two valves side by side. So this is a new valve. This is the same exact part number as the one in my right hand. This valve, the distance or depth between the top of this valve face and the center of this dish is deeper on this valve because as this valve was overheated, not only did it bend the stem, but as it's overheated, the valve springs are pulling up on the stem while the seat is holding the face of the valve in place. And once the valve is severely overheated, you actually are pulling up here and you pull the center of the valve back towards the retainer, leaving the face of the valve on the valve seat. And that's called tulipping the valve. So there's actually a notable amount of distortion that's present in this area of the valve now compared to the new valve. And that happened when the valve was superheated. Because the majority of the damage to this engine was done through the excessive use of anti-lag, the damage to the cylinder head didn't stop at the valve alone. The valve guide has been overheated to the point that it's discolored and cracked and pieces of the guide have now broken off and tried to pass the turbine wheel of the turbocharger, damaging the turbine itself. If you look at the CHRA, there's also discoloration present to the casting from being overheated. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's, a, it's an interesting subject to talk about. I mean, this valve is really bent up and it never touched the piston. It, it overheated so much that it changed shape in, in, in a gross amount. So you wanna be careful with the engine. You wanna be mindful of the amount of anti-lag that you're using. You wanna make sure that you're adding the cool down period after a run and that you're not subjecting the engine to excessive back pressure and excessive exhaust gas temperatures. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks and we'll see you next time.